satisfying sex life has been shown to improve our overall well-being, but every once in a while we get into a rut, right? Here with some tips on how to understand your triggers and help you get in the mood, clinical sexologist Shannon Boudreaux. Yeah. you hanging. I'm so happy you're back and, and that we're talking about sex because why not, why right? Not? It's when I'm here, it's kind of appropriate, so yes, let's do is. it. Let's do it. So we need to start by talking about triggers because everyone has a trigger, that thing that's going to help you get into the mood. Um, let's talk about identifying that. Yes, yeah, so as you know, I mean, when you first get into a relationship, you don't need a lot of triggers, right? No. The air is a trigger. <laughs> Food is a trigger. It just right. naturally happens. But it, when you move past that phase, what do you do? Kind of like love language is to make sure that you and your partner are getting in the mood at the same time. And right. if you feel it, how do you ensure your partner can feel it? And so I identified six different ways that people might uh, find themselves in that space. Okay. And the very first one being environmental. Mm -hmm. And that essentially means like the setting is a part of the sexual atmosphere. So if you can see laundry in your peripheral vision, no, no. right? If the dishes are dirty behind you, if the scent isn't right, like you're a fine wine and dine kind of person. Yes. You like the chocolates, the massages, the music, the lights, the candles, that's what's gonna get you in the right mood. Okay, so your partner needs to know this so they can set up the environment to put you in the sort of mood where you're gonna be on the same page. We move past environment, what's another trigger? Another one is desire. And those are people mm. who just need to hear it. This is a really big one, of course, in long-term relationships where yeah. you take for granted that your partner doesn't get to hear from you like, I want you. Yes. Like when I look at you, I can't get my hands to stop wanting to do things to you. What all those things, they just want to know that they are truly desired in that moment. So that's okay. similar to words of affirmation for love language. Really good. And this is something we tend to forget. We don't exercise that, you know, saying the desire out loud. That mm. needs to happen. You need to hear it. Um, what else? What is, what's, an, what's another trigger? Transactional is another one. Um, a lot of people might relate to this one, also known as chornography. Okay. Uh, which is pornography for chores. Well, okay. your partner <laughs> does a favor for you, you know, a major <laughs> thing. Like, hey, take the kiss of ballet and then we can talk. Like, take a load yes. off of my plate and then we can discuss doing this thing together. Right. And so it's a matter of the partnership. And so a transactional person needs a little bit more than just to sweeten the pot for them. It's interesting because I know that you're not you're not saying this based on gender, but I can see a lot of moms or a lot of women that are super busy that are taking on most of the work inside of the home feeling like these triggers would work for them. Because it's like the laundry and the peripheral vision, I'm not in the mood. The dishes in the sink, I'm not in the mood. Like all of these things I feel like I, I need to get them done before I can actually relax. So really good. I'm well, glad you've done that. Well, my is the exact opposite. Is my it? partner is like that where he's oh, just very okay. much and things have to be in place. And I'm like, it could be a World War Disaster. III. It's all good for me. Like okay. it doesn't matter. So you need to clean stuff up if you want to get some. Yes, I gotta, I gotta <laughs> put the work in. I gotta tuck right. some stuff away. Okay. Um, the other thing you say is cat and mouse. Tell me a little bit about that. Yes. Okay, so some people, their partner are just ready to go all the time, yeah. right? And it's like they don't give their partner a chance to get a little games going, a little play. And maybe for the cat, you know when you go to someone's house, they have a cat, you can't just start petting the cat right away. No. The cat has to come to there. you, right? There has to be a mutuality that happens. And so if your partner's cat and mouse, oftentimes it's letting them take the lead, leaving some space for some tension to occur yes. um, before you make the initiating act. Oh my gosh, can you text my husband and let him know that? <laughs> Leave her some space and she might respond. And that's what's important about these to know is that it's not personal, right? We tend to think of sexual desire and self-desire as one yeah. and the same, but they're not. I mean, your partner could still deeply desire you, but you might be going about it in a way just not really quite palatable for them. Got it. Okay, really good. Um, I want to talk about mental because I think the mental game is such a huge part of the sexual game, and you talk about this all the time. How is it important? Well, that's also known as sapiosexual, yeah. which is like another sexual identity, and that's people who they has to get turned on up here before it's dirty thoughts down there, right? Yes. It's got to be a good conversation. And for somebody who's mental, it's not just, hey, last week we had a great dinner, so next Tuesday. It has to be continuous. If they yes. don't feel like they've mentally connected with you, the physical is not going to be an option. Okay, so get them there. What about erotica? Have you thought about that? Is that in here or is that part of mental? Well, it's visual can it's be part visual. of that. Okay. Yeah, and a lot of uh, men might fall under visual. It doesn't take much. They just see it and they <laughs> want it in their mouth. They're basically large babies. <laughs> Visual, mental, environmental, all 
all of these triggers could eventually lead you to having a healthier sex life. So try a few. What I would say, it's yes. important to pick one. So on pick my website, thegameofdesire.com slash quiz, you can take the quiz for yourself. Because oh. when you say you're all six, as your partner, I don't really know what to do. If right. I can give you a clear instruction, like, hey, clean up, and that might really help me get that space, or yeah. I need to hear it from you. So start with one, then you can build additional nuances. Of course, we're all a little bit of each, but yeah. good communication is about clarity. Clarity is so important, so even important. if you have to spell it all out. Take the quiz. We're going to link your website to our website, if that's okay with you. Oh, please do. Cityline.tv, and we want you to go and take the quiz and get go on top of your sexual triggers. Thank you, Shannon. Thank you.